first thing necessary for all people is to have Iman and the creed of the Ahl Sunnat scholars as communicated in their books. It is these scholars who have explained the way of our Prophet Hadrat Muhammad salam, who have comprehended Murad i Illahi, the divine purpose of the Quran al Karim, and who have extracted the Prophet's purpose from the Hadith Sharifs. It is the way shown by them that will save us on the day of rising. It is the Ahl Sunnat scholars who have transferred the way of Allah's Prophet and his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in into books and who have protected them against being changed or defiled. Those scholars in the four madhabs who reached the grade of ishtihad and the great scholars educated by them are called the Ahl Sunnat scholars. The leader and the founder of the Ahl Sunnat is Imam i Azham Abu Hanifa Nu'man bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala an. Sal bin Abdullah Tusturi, rahmatullahi alayh, one of the great awliya who reached the grade of Hakikat, the highest grade in Tasawuf, says, If there had been a person like Imam i Azham Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayh, among the ummats of Hadrat Musa and Isa, they wouldn't have turned into Jews or Christians. Awliya are people whom Allah ta'ala loves. Millions of books written by this great leader and by hundreds of his disciples and by the thousands of great people educated by them, correctly spread and promulgate our Prophet's way all over the world. Today, there is not a city, a village, or a person left in the free world that has not heard about the Islam communicated by our Prophet. Upon hearing about Islam, if someone sincerely wants to learn it correctly, Allah Ta'ala promises that he will grant him true knowledge. Today, there are catalogs giving the names of the books on Islam that fill the world's libraries. For example, there are about 15,000 names of books and some 10,000 names of authors in the book Kashf al Sunun by Katib Jalabi. This book, in two volumes, is in Arabic. Ismail Pasha from Baghdad wrote two supplementary volumes to this book. Nearly 10,000 names of books and authors exist in these supplementaries. Kashf al Sunun was first printed in 1250 or 1835 AD in Leipzig. The upper portions of its pages were written in Arabic while the lower portions were in Latin. Before that, it was translated into French in 1112 or 1700 AD. At exactly the same time, it was printed in Egypt too. Lastly, together with its two supplementaries, it was printed in Arabic in Istanbul between 1360 and 1366, or 1941 to 1947 AD. The books are in the order of the Arabic alphabet. Four of them were sold at the libraries of the Ministry of Education in Turkey. The two-volume Arabic book Asma ul Mu'allafin by Ismail Pasha was printed in Istanbul in 1370 and 1374, 1951 and 1955 AD. In these two volumes, the authors of the books in Kashf Zunun and its supplementaries are written in the order of the Arabic alphabet, and under each name are the books written by the owner of the name. Today, another very useful and valuable book listing only the Arabic Islamic books existing all over the world and their authors and in which library they can be found and at which call number they exist in each country is Karl Brockelmann's German book Geschichte der Arbischen Literatur, which was printed in Leiden in 1362 or 1943 AD. The book Mifta Usaada by Tashkupruzade Ahmed Effendi, Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayh, the author of the book Shakayik i Nutmania, which gives the biographies of the scholars educated in the Ottoman Empire, defines and explains nearly 500 branches of knowledge and gives information about the books written in every branch of knowledge and their authors. His son, Kamal Adin Muhammad, translated this book from Arabic to Turkish. It lists the Islamic savants and their works, and he gave it the name Maudwat ul Ulum. This book was printed at the printing office of the newspaper Iqdam in 1313. It is available in bookstores. After seeing Islam's 20 main branches of knowledge and its 81 sub-branches and the scholars of these branches and the books which each of them wrote untiringly and perseverantly, an understanding and reasonable person cannot help admiring the great number of Islamic scholars and their skill at diving into the ocean of knowledge. In these books of theirs, refuting through documents and argumentations, the words of naturalists and materialists and the absurdities which non-Muslims wanted to inject into Islam, they silenced them all and thus extinguished the fire of instigation and corruption prepared by enemies of Islam. Moreover, exposing the shame of those who tried to give wrong meanings to the Quran 
and who strove to prepare defiled translations with evil intentions, they, on the one hand, clearly wrote one by one all the facts that have to be believed, and, on the other hand, very correctly presented to humanity the religious aspect of every event and action that has happened all over the world and all those which will happen until the end of the world. The names and biographies of more than 800 of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa's Rahmatullahi followers and those who attended his lectures are written in books. 560 of these are well known in the knowledge of fiqh and 36 of them attain the grade of ishtihad. Every bidat holder has inferred wrong meanings from ayats of the Quran al karim and hadith sharifs with covered meanings. Our Prophet salam stated, he who gives a false meaning to the Qur'an according to his own mind, thought, and knowledge, and who writes made-up interpretations, those contradictory to the explanations which the great men of religion have prepared after learning them from our Prophet and his Ashab, is a kafir. Please read the 50th disaster incurred by one speech discoursed on in Berika. We shouldn't buy or read the false books of interpretations published to make money by those who know nothing of Salat and Iman. We shouldn't believe their sequined advertisements. The valuable and right teachings derived from the Quran al karim and hadith sharifs is only what the Ahl-Sunnat savants understood and explained. Every renegade, every deviant, every man of bidat, and every ignorant person supposes and claims that they follow the way that's compatible with the Qur'an al-Karim and Hadith al-Sharifs. For this reason, not every meaning derived from the Qur'an and Hadith should be accepted and esteemed. It is impossible to escape torment in the hereafter for those who deviate as much as a hair's breadth from the creed and iman communicated by the Ahl Sunnah scholars, the great and pious people. Both the human mind and the entire Qur'an al-Karim and all the Hadith sharifs and the great religious men's perceptions through the heart agree on this fact. There cannot be a mistake in this. Words and books of those who deviate as much as a hair's breadth from what these great men communicated in their books are poisons. Those who use the religion as a means in order to earn worldly possessions and who, after introducing themselves as men of religion, write whatever occurs to their minds, are thieves of faith. They steal the beliefs of those who read their books and magazines. Those who believe them think of themselves as Muslims and perform namaz. However, because their iman has been stolen and lost, none of their prayers, worships, or good deeds are accepted, nor will they be of any value in the next world. Concerning those who sell their religion for the world, Allah Ta'ala revealed the 16th ayat of Surat al-Baqarah. The ignorant idiots gave away their religion in order to get the pleasures and enjoyments of the world. Selling out their next world, they received the world and what their lusts desired. Abandoning the way to salvation, they ran after perdition. They earned nothing in this act of buying and selling of theirs. They didn't know the way of trading or earning. They lost a great deal. Attaining happiness in both worlds depends only and only upon following Hadrat Muhammad salam, who is the master of this world and the next. To follow him, it is necessary to have Iman and to learn and to observe the rules of Islam. The symptom of true Iman's existence in the heart is to bear hostility against disbelievers and to annihilate the things that are peculiar to them and that are symptoms of disbelief. For Islam and Kufr are opposites, antonyms of each other. Where one of them exists, the other cannot stay and goes away. These two opposite things cannot stay in the same place together. To esteem one of them means to insult, to abhor the other. Allah Ta'ala commands Hadrat Muhammad, his beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who has the attribute khulq i azam and who is very merciful, to perform jihad, to make war against disbelievers and to treat them severely. This means to say that it is khulq i azam to have behave severely towards disbelievers. The dignity and honor of Islam is in insulting disbelief and disbelievers. He who glorifies and respects disbelievers insults and dishonors the Muslims. Declaring in the Quran, in the 149th ayat of Surat al-Ali Imran, that those who esteem and follow disbelievers are wrong and will repent, Allah Ta'ala states, O oh, those who believe my beloved Prophet, if you, believing the words of disbelievers, deviate from the way of my Messenger, and if you, taken in by the lurid and mendacious statements of those who pretend to be Muslims, let your faith and iman be stolen, 
You will be at a loss in this world and the next. Thank you.